not finding a way to bring him in because of the multitude, they went up to the housetop and led him down through the tiles with his cot into the middle before Jesus. Seeing their faith, he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven you. Luke 5, 19 and 20. Dear God, today we want to thank you for the gift of forgiveness. Even though we mess up every day, you still give us your love and forgiveness so freely. You let us start all over. Help us to have faith like the man and his friends in today's story. We know you have the power to do anything you choose. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for praying with us today. The Kids Bible in a Year podcast is sponsored by Little Passports, delivering monthly activity kit subscriptions that help kids explore the world, cultivate curiosity, and discover new interests with hands-on crafts and activities in cooking, science, crafts, and more, all with a unique cultural twist. Visit littlepassports.com blessed to learn more and save 20% with code blessed. Forgiving Sins In our last story, Jesus began to call his disciples, healed a man with an evil spirit, and also healed Peter's mother-in-law. In this story, we will learn about Jesus healing a paralytic man and forgiving his sins, and also calling Matthew, the tax collector, to be his follower, as inspired by the Gospels. Hello again, it's Julianne Thompson, guest hosting for Julia Jeffress Sadler, back here for another story from the Kids Bible in a Year podcast. Jesus shows us something new about himself in today's story, and it's pretty amazing. Listen close and watch how he once again gives us a whole new way to live. Jesus traveled to a house in Capernaum, When people heard that Jesus had come, they rushed to the house he was staying in. So many people filled the house that there was no room left. Many stood outside the house, just trying to get a glimpse of what was going on. Jesus was teaching to the large crowd. Four men came, carrying their friend, who was paralyzed, and could not move. The crowd was so large, the men could not get their friend to Jesus. So they climbed up on the house and made an opening in the roof above Jesus. After digging through the roof, they lowered their paralyzed friend on a mat. Jesus saw their faith and said to the paralytic man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Right then, the teachers of the law were upset at what Jesus had done. They began thinking things like, Why does this man talk like this? He's blaspheming. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew in his heart what the teachers were thinking in their hearts. So he said to them, It is easier to say to the paralytic man, Get up, take your mat, and walk. But I have forgiven this man, so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic man, I tell you, get up, take up your mat, and go home. He quickly stood up, picked up his mat, and walked out of the house in front of all of the people. This miracle amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Jesus went outside beside the lake, As he walked, he saw a man named Levi, also known as Matthew, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Jesus looked to Matthew and said, Follow me. Matthew immediately stood up and followed Jesus. Then Jesus joined Matthew and many other tax collectors and sinners for dinner at Matthew's house. The teachers of the law saw this and were shocked. They asked Jesus' disciples, Why does your teacher eat with sinners? Right when Jesus heard this, he said to them, The healthy people do not need doctors. Doctors are for sick people. 
I have come not for the righteous, but for the sinners. I tell you, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Well, as you can see, word about Jesus is spreading fast. People want to be near him, and they want to see if all the stories about him are true. That's why this house where Jesus was teaching was so crowded. We heard about four men who wanted their friend to be healed. He couldn't walk, and they were desperate to get to Jesus. So instead of fighting the crowds, these friends decided to lower him through the roof. Wouldn't you have loved to see this? And I don't know about you, but I would love to have friends like that. Even better, I would love to be a friend like that. Doing anything I can to help people I love get closer to Jesus. Okay, so Jesus knew that if these men went to that much trouble to lower their friend down from the roof, their faith must have been pretty strong. They must have been sure that Jesus could heal him. So Jesus told this man that his sins were forgiven because of his faith. And that caused quite a scene. People already knew Jesus could heal, but they didn't know that he could also have the power and authority to forgive someone's sins. Why? Because Jesus is God. Some people doubted Jesus, but he put their doubts to rest when he told the man to get up and walk. Do you remember what Jesus said? Go ahead and pick up your bed and walk right on out of here. And he did. Jesus did this to show the people and the teachers of the law that he was not just a prophet of God doing great things, but God himself with all the power and authority of his father. As today's story closes, we meet a new disciple named Levi. We know him as Matthew because that's the new name Jesus gave him. We'll go back to that in a minute. Levi was a tax collector, a Jew working for the Romans whose job was to collect money or taxes from the Jews. These tax collectors would often cheat people and charge them for more than what they owed, keeping the extra money for themselves. Because of that, no one liked tax collectors very much. They were seen as cheaters and usually didn't have many friends. But when Jesus saw Levi and said, follow me, he immediately obeyed. And to top it off, he was probably shocked that Jesus came to his house for dinner that night. When the Jewish leaders and teachers discovered this, they couldn't understand why Jesus would choose to hang out with a tax collector. Why are you with these sinners so much? They asked. But Jesus' answer to that question was pretty great. He asked a question right back to them, which he did quite often. He said, who is more in need of a doctor? Someone who's healthy or someone who's sick? Well, of course the answer to that question is someone who's sick. Jesus said in that same way, the reason he came to earth was for sinners, people who needed him not for people who knew how to obey all the rules. Here Jesus goes again, turning things upside down and surprising us with the wisdom and love. Sometimes, like the Jewish leaders, we only want to hang out around people who are just like us. Now that can be important too, because we want our closest friends to be the ones that love and follow God. But other times, God may want us to spend time with those who don't know as much about him. Why? so we can tell them. Maybe there's someone on your baseball team, in your dance class, or anyone else that might like to spend time with you. And if that person does not know Jesus, you could be the one to tell them. Jesus changed Levi's name to Matthew, which means gift of the Lord. He didn't see Matthew as a sinful tax collector. He saw him as a child of God and someone who would help him tell the world of his love. That's all for today. Remember, Jesus forgave Matthew of his sin and he can forgive you too. I hope you'll be back next time to hear what a little bird and the hairs on your head have in common. 
Here's a hint. He knows you so well. Don't forget the Bible is the best story ever told. It's God's story to you. And it's all true. Did our podcast make your day? Drop a review to guide other families to help us scatter joy across the world. Thanks for listening to Pray.com Kids Bible in a Year. For more inspiring stories and wisdom to last a lifetime, download the Pray.com app for free today. Thanks for listening to Kids Bible in a Year. I want to invite our adult listeners to check out my other show, Unapologetic, God's Truth on Today's Topics. It's unfiltered, important, inspiring, and we have awesome conversations and amazing guests such as Candace Cameron Bray, Vice President Mike Pence, Dr. Robert Jeffress, Shannon Bream, Maddie Pruitt, and so many others. We are helping you have conversations that empower you to have bold faith in a broken world. You'll be excited, inspired, and encouraged in your faith as you check out Unapologetic. Remember that you can tune in wherever you get your podcasts and on Pray.com.